Alrighty guys, welcome back to Star Wars Review. Today I'm reviewing Star Wars Ahsoka Part 5 Shadow Warrior, which was written and directed by Dave Filoni and was released on September 12th, 2023, which I really enjoyed the episode. Probably my favorite of uh, the season so far. Obviously, uh, Hayden Christensen returns once again as Anakin Skywalker, and you know, there was a lot of moments uh, with him there in the world between worlds. Which I really loved all those moments, which I'll, I'll kind of just dive into that stuff first. As it takes up, you know, the majority of the uh, first half of the episode. Which, uh, first I really enjoyed uh, Hayden as Anakin. Uh, you know, just his performance there, you know, kind of blends together, you know, his version of the character in the uh, prequel trilogy movies. But also the version of the character in the uh, Clone Wars animated series. Which, you know, he didn't voice Anakin in that series. Um, Matt Lantern. Uh, voice Anakin in the animated series. So, you know, kind of blended their two uh, performances together, I guess. And, you know, I thought Hayden did a uh, great great job uh, there. I just uh, really loved his uh, interactions with uh, Ahsoka. You know, obviously calling her uh, Snips and whatnot was fun and whatnot. But also seeing him in, you know, lightsaber doles was cool. He hasn't uh, missed a beat since, uh, you know... The prequels felt exactly like his, uh, the action there, even though he's almost like 20 years older than, uh, he was when they, uh, filmed the prequel movies. But, uh, he's kind of there to kind of give Ahsoka one last lesson, which I will say this was the thing I was probably the most, like, not into, because I really wasn't fully sure on exactly what the lesson was. He, uh, you know, um, gives Ahsoka a choice of life or death. You know, the, uh, lesson, I guess, was about, you know, life choosing life over death, I guess, because, you know, he gives Ahsoka a, a decision there to either choose to live or die, so I guess that's what the kind of, the lesson was about, um, we see, I guess, flashbacks, kind of, because we see a, uh, younger Ahsoka during the Clone Wars, Anakin's in his, uh, Clone Wars, uh, armor and whatnot, but I don't know if they really were flashbacks, as Anakin and Ahsoka both kind of know that they're in the past, so that was interesting, and also, Anakin, I don't know if he's, like, a vision to Ahsoka, or if he's actually, like, real or not. Obviously, it's not really answered, and it's a little more ambiguous, but I like that about it. But, uh, in the, uh, flashback stuff, we see two battles from the Clone Wars. One near the, uh, start of the war, which I don't say which battle it is, but we see Twi'leks in the background, so I'm assuming they're on Ryloth, which, uh, that... Was that in the uh, first season of the Clone Wars? I think we saw that. But uh, we then see the Siege of Mandalore, which is at the very end of the Clone Wars, as we saw that in the uh, final season and final episodes of the series. But uh, like I said, you know, obviously Ahsoka is younger in this point in time and obviously isn't played by Rosario Dawson. I think the uh, younger actress who played her was Ariana Greenblatt. Which I thought she did a uh, good job as the uh, younger Ahsoka. One thing I I liked about it was you know seeing a live action portrayal with a you know an actual younger actor and whatnot really uh, kind of showed how much you know the Jedi were using their Padawans as you know child soldiers. And, you know obviously the Clone Wars animated series was it's obvious that's the case, but in the live action version they really uh, drive home that uh, fact. But uh, what Anakin and Ahsoka talk about kind of relates to that, as we see them uh, arguing with each other, as we see Ahsoka's uh, reaction to war and how it kind of upsets her. And, you know, we see Anakin tell her that he needs to train her as a soldier, even though that's not what she's been trained as, as, you know, a youngling and whatnot, which, you know, Ahsoka brings that up. But Anakin tells her that, uh, you know, what a Jedi needs to be shifts with the time and you know, they're now at war, so they need to be soldiers, but, uh, one thing Ahsoka brings up what I liked was, uh, her kind of talking about training her own Padawan in the future, and if that's what she's gonna need to teach her Padawan to be a soldier, which kind of ties in to, uh, a lot of what this series has been about with her training, uh, Sabine, and how she is kind of training Sabine to be more like a soldier than a Jedi, when what Sabine needs is the opposite. She needs to become a Jedi more than a soldier because she already knows how to be a soldier. Because, you know, obviously she's Mandalorian and fought, you know, in the war as a rebel. So, you know, I like that. Obviously, I don't know if that was the full intent of that 
dialogue, but I would assume it is. But uh, during the Siege of Mandalore moments, we see uh, Anakin tell Ahsoka that she's now a warrior, just like he taught her, and that she'll be everything he is. You know, just like with him and Obi-Wan, and Obi-Wan with Qui-Gon, and you know, on and on and on. Anakin tells Ahsoka that him and her are part of a legacy, but Ahsoka says that her part is just of, a, of that legacy is just of war and death, which Anakin tells her that she's more than that, just like he's more than that, which upsets Ahsoka because she knows what becomes of, becomes of him, and it pisses Anakin off, who then kind of goes into his uh, dark side and tells Ahsoka that they must start from the beginning, as she hasn't learned anything, and he once again gives her the choice he did at the start, which is to live or die, which we then see them uh, back in the world between worlds, and uh, they start doling again, which Ahsoka is once again the uh, older version, but uh, Anakin tells her that she lacks conviction as they uh, start the duel, which eventually she is able to uh, best him and uh, takes his lightsaber. But after holding it up to his neck for a moment, she then throws it away, telling him that uh, she chooses to live, which Anakin then uh, closes his eyes and turns back to his uh, light side version and tells Ahsoka that there is still hope for her and then disappears as uh, Ahsoka turns around. Which Ahsoka then starts uh, sinking into the ground, which turns into water, and then she wakes up in the water as we see her being uh, rescued. Which we do see, uh, you know, what led to her getting rescued, you know, during all the moments she was in the world between worlds. But, you know, like I said, uh, I was maybe a little confused on exactly what the lesson Anakin was trying to teach Ahsoka was. You know, right now I'm just assuming it's probably the more simple, you know, part of exactly what he said, to choose life over death. I don't know, maybe there's more to it, but I just didn't get, but, uh, you know, like I said, I enjoyed Hayden's performance there, I like the look of the, uh, world between worlds, um, honestly, I will say the look of, uh, Mandalore and, uh, what I'm assuming is, is Ryloth, obviously it's very, like, foggy, I assume it's because of that, because it's like, you know, uh, flashback or dream or force weirdness stuff, so, that's more of a, Plot reason, obviously, I'm assuming it's more of a budget reason why it kind of looks that way. I don't know. But like I said, we do see what led to Ahsoka getting rescued. Uh, near the start of the episode, we see Hera and the others land on Setos, where they run into Hu Yang, who's uh, visibly, visibly upset, holding Sabine's helmet, which, uh, you know, this moment I really liked. And you know, it's kind of odd, but Hu Yang has been one of my favorite uh, performances in the season or series. Uh, just from the voiceover from David Tennant, and then the work done by the, uh, I guess, animatronic, public hearing, and whatnot, and then, I would assume there's probably some, you know, CG elements also, as I would assume Hu Yang was done with, uh, both on-set, uh, practical and digital effects, but, uh, I'm not fully sure there, but, uh, you know, I just really love the, the performance all of those aspects have given for him, and I've just really loved them in the uh, series so far. But um, after that, there was like a nice scene with uh, Hera and Jason. And we see uh, Hera speaking with uh, Carson Teva about uh, reporting in and whatnot. And it seems like uh, Leia is helping them out by uh, stalling the New Republic. As, um, you know, obviously they went there, you know, I guess unannounced or whatever. But uh, during this, we see uh, Jason and Chopper looking out into the water. And Jason is trying to tell Hera that something's off with the water, which at first she doesn't listen, but eventually, you know, Jason kind of keeps asking, and she eventually does, and Jason reveals that he hears uh, lightsabers, which I guess Hera might be able to hear it also, as she starts to listen to, and, you know, she, I guess, does, and then says to do another sweep of the ocean, but also the music was right here, kind of mixes uh, Kanan, or some of uh, the themes used for Kanan, with the uh, force theme, I really, really love that, uh, you know, theme there. But also then the moment afterwards, where we see uh, Carson is kind of confused, and he asks uh, Hu Yang, and Hu Yang tells him that uh, Jason's father was Kanan Jarrus, who was a Jedi, and that Jason also has those powers. And, you know, I just really liked uh, Carson's response. He's just like, uh, okay, and goes to his X-Wing, but, uh, we then later see uh, Hera and Hu Yang in the ghost, which uh, they kind of talk for a little bit, but uh, Hera does bring up to Hu Yang that the New Republic didn't sanction their mission to go to Setos, 
and that, you know, Hera chose to do it herself, and Hu Yang then tells Hera that, you know, that's why people like you. Sorry, like that moment, but, uh, Jason then calls him up saying, uh, Chopper has found something, and so they fly towards that location, which is where they find Ahsoka in the water and rescue her, which sometime later we see Ahsoka waking up in her T6 shuttle, which, um, she doesn't have her, uh, crown, like, thingy on her head, so, um, she's very weird looking, and, uh, you know, she kind of looks like she's been, uh, in a bathtub for days, which, I'll say, she was underwater for a very long time, but, uh, she kind of looks like that, and it's very weird looking, um, I hope we never see her like that again, but, uh, Hu Yang greets her, and, you know, asks about Sabine, which I then go outside and speak with Hera, and we see, uh, Ahsoka thanking, uh, Jason for, uh, saving her, but, uh, Ahsoka then uses the force to kind of figure out what happened, which is that, uh, Sabine went willing, willingly with the enemies, but she tells Hera that, uh, Sabine was captured and, you know, taken off-world into the other galaxy, but, uh, Carson comes over and tells Hera that they don't have, uh, much time, as the New Republic fleet is, uh, coming to, you know, pretty much arrest them, so, Ahsoka has to come up with a plan quickly, which we do see her uh, kind of look up into the sky and see the uh, Pargo, which gives her an uh, an idea. But uh, we see Hera and Carson in the uh, ghost uh, speaking with Mon Mothma, which she asks them if they have any proof of the Imperial Remnants being there, which they don't. So there's nothing she can do to help them out anymore. But uh, you know, after the call, Ahsoka comes in with the plan, which is for her and Hu Yang to fly up in the T-6 shuttle and get swallowed by one of the Pergil, and hopefully it takes them to the right place. And so that's what they do. Uh, obviously, it's a lot longer than just that simple description of it, but I really liked it, you know, just very, uh, you know, I, I don't know how to describe it, but I just really liked uh, seeing Ahsoka kind of, she walks out onto the, uh, T6 shuttles, um, you know, she, she leaves the ship and then goes up to the Pergo and uses the force on it to kind of, to get it to open its mouth so they can fly in. I really like that. I do like big whales, so I, you know, like the Pergo, you know, they're very, uh, majestic, which I guess that's kind of how I would describe the scene, very majestic, so I really like that. But, uh, once they get in, they kind of then leave Setos, but the New Republic, uh, Ships arrived beforehand, which uh, we do see uh, Carson having to uh, stall the New Republic so uh, Ahsoka and Hu Yang can get inside the Pergo, which I like those mo- that moment there of Carson kind of speaking to them and, you know, them not really believing him. But once the Pergo come up, they believe them or believe him and then get out of the way. But uh, before the per- Pergo jump to hyperspace, we see uh, Ahsoka speaking over the comms with Hera which, uh, Hera and Jason were in the, uh, ghost, uh, watching Ahsoka and Hu Yang do the stuff with the Pergil, but, uh, there was also a moment with, uh, Ahsoka and Hu Yang, which Hu Yang, you know, asks her about the plan working, and Ahsoka kind of, or, you know, Hu Yang asks her if she knows that they're gonna go to the right place, and Ahsoka says that she doesn't, which, uh, kind of shocks Hu Yang, but, uh, the episode ends as they, uh, jump to hyperspace, so yeah, but uh, like I said, I really enjoyed the episode. Probably my favorite one uh, so far. I do wish we maybe got a little bit with the uh, or with uh, Sabine and the villains, but that's okay. As I do know what happens in the next episode, so it kind of helps there. But uh, I really enjoyed all the stuff in the world between worlds. The stuff of the uh, Pergil, the score was great. You know, I also liked how they brought in uh, some themes from the Clone Wars and Rebels. I completely forgot to mention that our uh, Rex briefly appears a little bit in the, uh, flashback scenes. We see him in the, uh, phase, or, um, uh, phase one, phase two, clone trooper armor, but, uh, he doesn't really do much, but we do hear the, uh, the clone theme, which was great. Like I mentioned, uh, the mixture of, uh, Kanan's theme with the fourth theme was great, too. And obviously the rest of, the uh, the score was great. So, um, yeah, you know, I really enjoyed the episode. So my grade, I'm gonna give it an A. So, yeah, but... Next, I'll review uh, episode six, so you can check that out then. But in the meantime, check out my reviews on the first four episodes and all my other Ahsoka videos and everything else I do. But I've been Star Wars Review, and I'll catch you guys in the uh, next one. If we don't stop Thrawn, everything will be in vain. You have no 
power. Anakin spoke highly of you. I'm not here to discuss my past. We have a lot of work to do. Once a rebel, always a rebel. <laughs>